Good morning, Miss Barbara. Hi, glad to see you. I just sent everybody an announcement. I made a special video to help with um, something you're about to cover. Uh, if not this week, then next week. So uh, it's called extra help with uh, analyzing quadratic functions. I think it's going to be this week you cover it, but I'm not sure. Meanwhile, we didn't get to something we needed to get to last week, and that is the inverse functions of radical functions. Remember, we've done inverse functions, how you go about finding the inverse of a function, but this will be a good review of the steps as we apply them to uh, radical functions. OK, so here's number one in your homework. Here we've got a radical function. F of X equals the cube root. Of three X. OK, now what we need to do is find the inverse function. Remember, there's there are steps you follow to find an inverse of a function. And here it is. First, you change the f of x to y. Then you switch the letters. OK, now let me make sure I am indeed recording and I am OK. Just always have to make sure. Now I need to solve for Y, but Y is locked up underneath a cube radical. So I am going to have to do the opposite, the inverse operation of cubing of taking a cube root, which is cubing. That is, I'm going to cube both sides of the equation. So we'll have x to the third equals, now how this works, remember this, the cube root of something can also be written as the one third root. And remember, I'm cubing that. So when you have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. One third times three, if you put that in your calculator, is one. How handy can we get? Well, 3y to the 1 power is just 3y. So to solve for y, I divide by 3 and I divide by 3. So y equals x to the third power over 3. But what y is now is it's the inverse of that original function f of x. And the way that you write inverse is this way. f inverse of x is what you say and f inverse of x equals x to the third over three. So the original function f of x is the cube root of three x, 
and its inverse, F inverse of X, is X to the third power over three. Okay, now going through these steps. One, you change the F of X to Y. Two, you switch the X and the Y. And three, you solve for Y, and that's the longest part. And then four, you write what Y equals as this. We've done these before with linear functions. Now we're doing them with radical functions. Um, yeah. Let's do another one. They're not more difficult than this. Thank goodness. All right, find the inverse function of. Notice these all have odd indexes. That's because those are the most likely to be one-to-one -one functions. Remember that a quadratic function is not one-to-one, -one, so you can't just flat out find the inverse, because if you did, the answer would be wrong because this is not a one-to-one -one function, because it fails the horizontal line test. The horizontal line has to touch only, only one, needs to touch only one part of the graph, not two. Here it touches two, so this is not one-to-one. -one. If this is the graph of y equals x squared, x squared, is not one to one. And the reason it's important that the function be one to one is that is the only way you can find an inverse. Here's our next one. We are going to find the inverse function of the fifth root of X minus five. So step one, I change F of X to Y because that's what it is anyway. Okay, now step two. I switch the letters. Okay, now step three. I have to solve for Y, which is stuck under there. So what I'm going to have to do is use the inverse operation of taking a fifth root, and that's to raise to a fifth power. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we now will proceed to do this. A shortcut is to say, well, if I raise to the fifth power a fifth root, they're going to cancel each other out because up here that's precisely what happened. Three times one third is one. They cancel each other out. You can think of it that way. So when I take a fifth root, and raise it to the fifth power, what I get is what's underneath. Like that. Then all I have to do is solve for Y because Y isn't stuck under a radical anymore. So I'm going to add five to both sides. 
of the equation. So I find that x to the fifth power plus five equals y minus five. Uh, uh, y plus five minus five, which is zero. Which is zero, yeah. Which is y, I'm sorry. I'll get it eventually, y. So let's make this neater, y equals x to the fifth power plus five. Now, the last step, step four. What y is now is it's the inverse of that function. The symbol for inverse function is f inverse of x. And there it is right there. So you would click on B. You don't even have to write it out. Okay, let's do one more. Let's see if there's a super hard one in here. Let's do this one. Actually though, I, I'm going to do this one, then I'm going to go back. And I hear my dog waking up. Number five. F of X. Equals one third. X to the third power minus five. That looks kind of bad, doesn't it? Well, let's see. Y equals one third X to the third power. They're multiplied. Minus five. Now I'm going to switch the X and the Y. X equals one third Y minus five. Oh, it's not that hard at all, except I left the three out. That would make it a little more difficult. Yes, it would. Okay, I'm going to add five to both sides, plus five, plus five, and I will get X plus five equals one third times Y to the third. Okay, now I want to, let's see what they're doing. Okay, okay. I have to get rid of the one third. I know how to get rid of fractions. If I multiply one third by three, in the form of a fraction, then the threes will cancel. But I have to do the same thing over there. I have to multiply the other side of the equation by three. So, I will take the three and multiply it by X and multiply it by five. So I have three X plus 15 equals Y to the third. Well, that's almost Y, but it's not quite Y, it's Y to the third. I need to undo the cube power. So how do I do that? I take a cube root. of both sides. The, 
um, this is the same thing as this. You can keep the three inside or outside. But when you raise a cube root to a cube power, you just get to undo the radical. So now we have, let, let's go with this first because I'm thinking that might not have been clear to you. Let's go this way. Let's say I did not move my cube outside. Let's just say I kept it inside. Then I would have y to the third to the one third power. And when a base is raised to a power and raised to a power again, you multiply them. Three times one third is one. So that's why. So you're gonna have y equals the cube root of three x plus 15, and as you can see, the answer is C. But let's do it the grown up math student way and write it the right way. We've got F inverse of X equals the cube root of three X plus 15. Same four steps. Here was step one. Here was step two, where you switch the letters, switch variables. Here's step three, and three is where you go through however many steps you have to go to to solve for y. And then this is step four. Same steps all the time. Now, something I thought was a form of cheating when I was a student, you're going to encounter it, this one, f of x equals the square root of x minus two. 4x being greater than or equal to 2. Um, if this were just this, so let's ignore that for a minute, and let's just say, okay, I'm going to find the inverse of the square root of x minus 2. So I'm going to go through the steps. There's a minor, well, it's a pretty major problem actually with this. And then two, I'm going to square up. Uh, am I going to square both sides? No, I'm going to switch letters. Now I'm going to solve for y. which means I have to do the opposite of taking a square root, which we already know is squaring. And when you square square root, boom, the radical's gone. I should do that without cheating though. Here's what's really happening. There's an invisible two here. 
the square root of, is it y minus two? Yeah, y minus two squared is going to be y minus two to the one half. squared, which is going to be y minus 2 to the 1 half times 2. Put that in your calculator, it's 1. That's y minus 2 to the 1, which is just y minus 2. And I don't need the parentheses. So, going back here, that's not four. That's just line four. Where this is still all part of three, I need to solve for y. So I'll add two to both sides. Now step four, right? We're gonna keep our mouths shut for a minute. All by itself, This cannot be an inverse function because it's not one to one. However, if we specify that, then what we're going to get is so let's talk a little bit about something we haven't talked about at all since you first uh, uh, learned about inverse functions, which you may not even remember because it was pretty near the very first, the second week of school. And now here it is the eighth week, happy midterm. Hard to believe. Okay. So we have f of x equals the square root of x minus 2, but we're, we're saying x has got to be um, equal to or greater than 2. And then f inverse of x is x squared plus 2. Something we talked about but not that much is that the domain of the original function function and the range of, of, of the original function Switch. That's why you switch your X and Y. I'll show you. Here they're specifying the domain. That X is going to be greater than or equal to 2. And the range is going to be Y equal to or greater than zero. I'll show it to you. Um, we're taking the square root of X minus two.
Okay, if, if you're using the older calculator, be sure you close your parentheses. Make sure that, that there are parentheses around the X minus two, and they're closed. Okay, otherwise it will misunderstand what you're saying. So let's graph it. Here's the part, X equals two or greater than to the right of two. Okay, now. Oh, and, and the range goes from zero, y equals zero, up slowly to y equals positive infinity. Um, now, let us uh, graph in red. Hi, Ayla. Have to tell my dog hello. Excuse me. Come on, Ayla. Yeah, here she comes. Here she comes. She needs her attention, you know, you know. Now, back to work. We're going to graph the uh, inverse function in red. X squared plus two. Okay, now, wait a second here. Here's the domain and here's the range of the original function. Here's the domain and here's the range of the inverse function. The only part of this function we're going to take is, all right, the range of the original function is y is greater than or equal to zero. So we're only going to take the part of the domain that is x greater than or equal to zero. And the only part of the range we're going to take of this is y greater than or equal to two. Now what that means for us is this. Where's my graph? There it is. Okay, if the range is y is greater than or equal to two, there's nothing exciting about that. But if the domain now has to be zero, x greater than or equal to zero, we're talking about just the right side of this graph, not the left side. Now, I wish I could cover that up, so let me do this. This is going to look like this. This is going to look like this. Both of these pass the vertical, the, the horizontal line test, the HLT. H L T. The horizontal line goes through the graph only once and over here as long as I'm taking half of the graph of H squared plus two, it passes the horizontal line test. So this is the sneaky way mathematicians get around the rules. This is your answer right here. Domain X greater than or equal to zero, range Y is greater than or equal to two, which is switched from what they were over here. And inverse functions will always be that way. 